Hello, my name is Mark Ellis from Stick and Rudder Studios, and uh, today I want to take you through uh, the first tutorial of X Camera 2.4. And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to cover installation of the plugin, um, how to uh, insert your registration key, um, and get it X Camera so that it's in registered mode. We're also going to cover basic camera creation. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are planning on using X Camera with Track IR or a track IR emulator will go over how to how to set up uh, using track IR and how to set the track IR limits if you so desire to use uh, the limit option uh, so with that why don't we take a look at how we actually go through and do inst do an installation of X camera okay when you uh, download X camera it'll likely uh, be put into your downloads directory this depends a little bit upon you know your browser and what you're using to download the software but typically it gets put in a downloads uh, directory someplace and uh, you'll see that the uh, plugin is packaged in a zip file uh, in this case we have xcamera 2.4.zip uh, now what you're going to want to do is unzip this into a temporary directory and I'm using uh, 7-zip um, there's a m number of different uh, zip utilities out there but I use 7-zip and I just uh, click on this I right click and I can go to 7-zip and I'm going to say uh, extract it to Xcamera 2.4 so this is basically my temporary directory here I'm just going to double click on that and you'll see inside that there's an Xcamera directory now for a moment let's just explore what's in there if we double click on this you're going to see that there is um, the various binary directories 32, 64 Linux 64 for Linux, uh, Mac 64 for the Mac, um, WinX 64 for Windows. Uh, there will be directories for your community uh, aircraft cameras, my airport cameras, which we'll all cover uh, a little later on in future tutorials. But there's also a user guide in here that you're probably going to want to be aware of and take a look at when you have a chance. So how do we install this? Well, let's just go back up to this directory here. Uh, and what we're going to want to do is just copy this X camera directory and now we're going to go over and put it into the X plane 11 plugins folder so I have my X plane installation over here on the D drive double click X plane 11 go to resources plugins so again we're on X plane 11 resources and plugins and then all you want to do is paste that X camera folder right here Okay, so now we've got X camera installed in the X plane 11 plugins folder. All we need to do now is start up X plane, which we'll do. And for my demonstration purposes, I'm going to be doing this demonstration all with X plane 11.5. Um, depending upon when you uh, watch this video, 11.5 is in beta testing right now, but uh, it should be released in the not too distant future. Uh, it's a public beta, so everybody's available to it. And I'm um, using X Plane 11.5 because it actually has a few features that we're taking advantage of in X Camera. And when I get to those, I'll point out, you know, what's unique to X Plane 11.5. All right, let's fire up X Plane. Okay, now that we have uh, X Plane up and running and we're in the default Cessna 172, which is a pretty good plane to do a, a tutorial with, um, I want to show you how you would uh, enter your registration key for X Camera. Now, a couple things to point out X Camera does come 
with a number of features that are completely free. You don't need a registration key for them. And I'll try to cover what those are in the tutorials we go a little bit further along. Um, but most people, I think, once you try it out, uh, you'll likely end up buying a registration key because some of the more advanced features that, that, that are required for the registration um, key, I think, are pretty valuable and most people will want them. Uh, so at this point, if you don't have a registration key, uh, you should be able to come up here and you should see X Camera in the, um, in the plugins menu. This tells you that X Camera is actually installed properly. Uh, and you could uh, right off the bat go in and enable it and start doing camera definitions. But what I'm going to do first is show you how to put the registration in. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, depending on how you purchase it, um, you're either going to get an email with the license key as an attachment, and that's the way it's going to be if you buy it from the Stick and Rudder Studios website. If you buy it on explain.org, the serial number for X Camera will actually be in the download for that purchase uh, on your explain.org site. Um, and once you have the serial number, you can enter it into this registration dialog, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. But let's take a look at what it looks like if you get it in an email from purchasing it from the Stick and Rudder Studios website. So I'm going to go to my Gmail account here. And you'll see that I have an email here concerning my 2.x license key. And if I just click on that, you'll see that I get this email here. And there should be a license.txt file attachment OK to it. Now this license.txt is just a plain ordinary text file. It has your key on line 1 and it has your email address on line 2. Now. The good news is this is the way your key is going to actually get stored in X camera after you're registered. It's just this file is basically saved into the X camera folder. Uh, and X camera looks at it every time it starts up to make sure that you've got a key installed. So all we really need to do is just come over here and just um, do a, let's see, I think what we'll do is we'll download it first. Right, and that should put this in my downloads directory. Let me just double check that. And sure enough, there it is. And we're just going to copy it. And we're going to come over to our explain folder. Resources. Plugins. X camera. And again, I'm in X-Plane 11, Resources, Plugins, X-Camera, and I'm just going to paste it right there so that X-Camera can see it. And now what I'll do is I'll come over to X-Camera, go up to the Plugins menu, X-Camera, Validate Registration, and what should have happened is X-Camera went ahead, saw that there was a license.txt file, it read it, and it populates these two fields here you know, with your key and your email address. And I can just hit the validate button and I'm going to do that in just a minute. Now, if you wanted to, you could have opened that license.txt file and just copied the key out of it and did a paste or copied your email and did a paste. Or in the case, if you bought the key on the explain.org site, you go to the downloads area for that purchase. You'll find the serial number there. You could just copy it onto your clipboard and come over and paste it in. And then all you have to do is hit validate. And if everything's working right, it's, you should get a little green indicator here saying your key's valid. And it should say registered up here in the top. So we're good to go. Now you only have to do this once, assuming that you don't delete that license.txt file or you know somehow you know um, have to completely reinstall X camera from scratch. It should stay registered okay for the for the duration as long as that license.txt file is there and it's got a valid key in it. Okay? So now the next thing we're going to do is create our first uh, set of cameras. Um, so by default, when X camera starts up, it tries to look to see if you have a camera definition file for the plane. If you got one, it will go ahead and load it and will automatically enable. In this case, I don't have a camera definition file yet for the Cessna 172. So I'm going to want to go up and make one. And that kind of happens automatically as soon as you enable X camera with a plane that does not have a camera definition file. So we're just going to come up here, we're going to go to X camera, and we're going to say enable. 
and you can see right out of the shoot that it says that it created a new camera file and at this point uh, that new camera file which we're going to see in a minute it's just got one camera in it and it has one category which is the cockpit category and it has one camera which is the pilot view which is effectively the same position that your pilot camera was in within default X-Plane without X-Camera enabled okay and now we can come in and we can bring up the control panel first thing you'll notice is that if I put my mouse down at the bottom of the screen you get this little mini control panel that pops up and in here we'll go over this in a little bit more detail in a few minutes but you've got commands you can operate here you've got uh, any favorite uh, cameras that you've created um, but I can bring the control panel up from here I can also bring the control panel up from up here by simply saying toggle control panel and this is the X camera control panel now in this case we're showing it with a little bit of a translucent background that sometimes is very useful for being able to uh, see what's going on behind here as you're trying to position the cameras you can also come up here and click solid background to get it to have a solid background which makes the options and things stand up a little bit better but also makes it a little bit more difficult to see what's going on behind it uh, but let's just sort of look at this user interface here real quickly and do a quick overview of it so the first thing you'll notice is there's two sub windows here first one's the category and with X camera you can have up to 20 categories and then within each category you have your cameras which are over here and you can have I think it's uh, currently 150 cameras that you can have per category so you can see you can go kind of crazy and have more cameras than you'll probably ever really use okay and as I said when you first enable X camera the first thing it does it creates this cockpit category for you automatically and it creates a pilot view camera which is effectively a camera at uh, you know the typical default X-Plane uh, pilot station and from here we can create some more cameras but first let's just show you how you can maybe move this run around a little bit I'm gonna go back to a um, a uh, translucent background and you could move this camera now by simply using your arrow keys left arrow right arrow up arrow down arrow the dot should move it in the comma should move it out okay and you can even do things like right click and do a mouse look okay to to move it around okay pitch it up pitch it down you know kind of get this camera positioned wherever I you know want it now I'm going to come up here and quickly restore that camera file so it comes back to what the default is and let's say you know I'm pretty happy with this maybe I might want this camera up a little bit higher so I can get a little bit of view of the cowling um, and you know what I'm pretty happy with that that looks pretty good so I'm just going to save it and I now have my pilot camera where I want it okay let's say I now want to do another camera and uh, maybe another one that's pretty common is I want a close-up of uh, you know let's say the six-pack uh, the sort of the the basic instruments that you always use in a Cessna 172 so I'm just gonna use my down arrow to come in I use my dot key to move in like this get this position right where I want it you know that's pretty good I'm pretty happy with that maybe I'll come over here like this a little bit and I like that one okay now I'm just going to come up here and I either can go to this menu and just say add camera to the end added camera two to category cockpit okay and now I want to rename that uh, I'm going to select it I'm going to right click and in here I'm just going to change the name to I'll call it six pack press return all right so that camera's all set now I can go back and forth between these two cameras pretty easily I also want to show you that they show up down here in the mini control panel too you'll see that I've got my pilot view camera which we're going to go over in a minute that's actually marked as a favorite with a view ID I've got my category called cockpit and I have in that category cockpit I have my pilot view and I've got my six pack view so you can see how these show up in the mini control panel uh, as I add cameras now let's say uh, you'll notice that the way these transition is as soon as I click them it's instantaneous let's say maybe I'd like to have a nice smooth transition between these cameras 
Well, there's a little checkbox down here called Smooth Enable Smooth Transition. I'm going to check in on both of these cameras. And now, as I go back and forth, you see that I get kind of a nice back and forth transition between these cameras. So that's kind of a nice feature that people tend to like to use. And once I add a camera and I'm happy with it, I'm going to do a save all. Okay, let's say I want another one. Oh, uh, that might be a good one. Ah, typical good one is I, I'm going to want a kind of a close-up of my GPS and my radio stack. So I'll just come on down here with the arrow keys. I'll zoom in here a little bit. Get this right to where I want it. Eh, good, I can see the transponder. I got the... Uh, just put this out of the way real quick here. We can close that. That looks like a pretty good view. I pretty much have everything I need. I got the ADF in here. I got my two GPSs. I have my transponder, my autopilot. You know, that's looking pretty good. And bring the control panel up. And we're just going to say head to end. Added camera three to category cockpit. And I'll right click. And I'll call this GPS radios. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. Now I want to show you another feature. Um, typically by default, and I'm going to close this control panel real quick here, you'll notice that I'm, uh, you can't see me doing this, but I'm using my scroll wheel right now to scroll around. Um, and all of these controls also typically use a scroll wheel to change them. Okay. Now one of the things that are a little aggravating and explain is it's really easy to slip off of these things and end up getting the view to zoom on you. You can shut that off on a per camera basis. So I'm going to bring the control panel back up here. And there is a feature here, I'll put the solid back, called Disable Cockpit Zoom. So if I turn that on, you'll notice that what happens, I'm actually trying to operate the camera zoom right now. It doesn't zoom. So you can lock that out, but if I come over here and I mani manipulate any of these other scroll scrollable items, like on the GPS, they'll work. So that's a nice little feature, and you can turn that on or off based upon, um, you know, the particular camera you have selected. As an example, if I go to pilot view, I don't have that on, so I can scroll back and forth. As soon as I go to the GPS radios, now I'm scrolling, nothing happens, all right? So again, now I've added that, I'm going to do a save all, just to make sure I have all my cameras in a pretty good spot. And I think what I'll do is I'll go to the next one. I can also use this little thing up here to minimize this control panel if I want to quickly be able to get it in and out of my way. All right, let's see, what's next? Switches. That's a pretty common one to use. So I'll come on down. I'll zoom in. Now you'll notice that this yoke is in the way. Now I could probably just put the camera in even closer and, and get past the yoke. But I want to show you another feature. Say we don't want that yoke showing. You can come over here to yoke visibility and I can say for this um, you know, particular camera, I'm going to want to shut that off. Okay, But let's first add the camera to get it so that it's doing that. Uh, let's say I kind of like this. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say add to end. Added camera four to category cockpit. Select it. Right click. Call it switches. And now what I'm going to do is come in here to yoke visibility and I'm going to say force to zero, which should hide the yoke. If I come down here and go to the pilot view, notice the yoke is still showing. If I come down here to switches, the yoke is hidden. Now, I want to warn you, this doesn't necessarily always work on every plane. It, it depends on the plane uh, reacting to the X camera data refs, okay, for hiding and unhiding the yoke. Most of them do, but you may find some third party aircraft where they don't respond to those commands those data ref operations. But pretty much all of the um, 
laminar planes do react to this and it can be very convenient you know particularly if I want to be able to have an unobstructed view of some uh, of various aspects of the air of the uh, cockpit so I think we're in pretty good shape here let's do a save all and again I always like to periodically come back and check and make sure everything's working the way I want it to GPS switches looking good all right so you know what I'm not sure I like the order of these very much um, maybe what I might want is I want the switches after the six pack so all you have to do to rearrange the order is you just left click and drag it and move it up so now the order is pilot view six pack switches GPS all right and again you could drag it down too I could say maybe I want the six pack to be down at the end just left click and drag you know to put it where you want it to be now I put it back up here all right so let's see why don't we add another category um, maybe we'd like to have a couple of cameras in the cabin so just like we added new cameras over here we just come over here and we can use this menu up here and we can say add category to the end added camera one to category category two now what X camera does is it creates the camera that creates the new category and it always puts one camera in it and the camera that it puts in it is simply a copy of the last one that you that you had selected I mean it gives it a new name but for the most part all of the features and things on that particular camera uh, you know are the same and again to change the name of this we're going to just kind of right click and we'll call this uh, cabin and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera back with the comma key by the way let me show you another way to move the camera around too you see these little X Y and Z here you can drag these things like the Z is your forward and back if I left click and move back and forth like this I can move the camera back and forth like this I can also do the same thing with the X and Y I can also double click on it and I could put in a value that I want say I want this to be one right hey look at that that happens to get it kind of almost where I want it all right uh, and I'm going to rotate this a little bit like this kind of looks good and maybe I'll move the camera down a notch and I'll rename this to left passenger that looks good and now what I think I'll do is I'm gonna replicate that now I think what I want to do is I want to get this to the cameras facing forward again I believe all I have to do is press the center key and it will make the pitch and the yaw of the camera zero and now I'm just gonna move it over to the right I'll use my mouse look my right click and rotate the camera a little bit so it's looking out like this and I'll just come up and say add to end add camera two to category cabin click right passenger and we'll save all of our, all of our um, all of our cameras and let's just make sure it all works that looks good switches look good GPS looks good over the cabin there's the right passenger there's the left passenger all looking really nice and if everything's working properly we all should, should be able to get at them through the mini control panel down here we'll go to cockpit six pack switches GPS back to the cabin looking good very happy with all of that okay so we've got a pretty good set of cameras that we've got set up right now now a typical thing is people are going to want to map joystick keys or uh, keypad keys to select some of these cameras um, and X camera does definitely support that and it uses a concept um, called view IDs and these are simply numbers 
that you associate with each camera that gives it a unique identifier. And the reason we need to do this is that X camera can support thousands of cameras. Um, obviously you're not going to want to have a keyboard key associated with every single camera so this allows us to identify those cameras which we might mark as kind of like favorites um, and you can have uh, within uh, on an aircraft camera file you can have up to 50 favorites um, and in an airport file you can have up to 65 although typically we just use the top 15 we use um, from view ID 51 up to 65 for airport cameras, which we'll get, get into in another tutorial. But let's just go through and, uh, and see how we assign view IDs. So by default, when X camera creates your very first cockpit in your pilot view camera, it always assigns a view ID 1 to that, um, just because that's a, a typical thing that people are going to want to use. Now, uh, we can assign more view IDs. Let's say as an example, uh, for the six pack, maybe I want that to be view ID number two. Just click the drop down, and maybe I want the switches to be view ID number three. Um, and we'll make this one be view ID number four. And let's just start with that for a minute. Okay, so I have all these as favorites. Now I want to show you as soon as you assign a view ID to it, any favorite is going to show up in the mini control panel is one of these green buttons. Each of these have got a view ID associated with it and allows me to get to that camera very quickly. Um, also, once it's got a view ID assigned to it, I can map a keyboard key to it. Now, by default, X camera is going to, is going to um, mimic or emulate all of the X plane quick looks. There's just one little quirk to it, okay? Normally in X-Plane, unless you change it, your numeric keypad on your keyboard is associated with these quick look keys. So typically numeric keyboard key zero, the numeric keypad key zero, is associated with quick look zero. One is associated with quick look one. Now the one thing with X cameras is, is all of our view IDs are offset by one. There's no, view ID zero is not a valid view ID. So the way we make this work in X camera is, Quick look key zero is actually view ID one. Quick look key one is going to be view ID two. So you don't see me doing this, but I'm going to I'm going to press on my numeric keypad number one, which should bring me to the six pack. Numeric key number two is going to bring me to view ID three, which is my radios. And if I press um, numeric keypad key zero, it's going to bring me back to the pilot view. Now. If you use Quick Looks, X Plane supports up to 20 of those, um, which is the basically the limitation. You can go to 0 through 9, and then I think it's maybe Shift 0 through 9 to get the top 20. Um, there's a keyboard modifier on there that gets you the, the next 10 on top of the, the basic numeric keypad keys. That's all well and good, but X Camera can, allows you to define up to 50 view IDs. So what could we use, okay, to define either, to map either joystick buttons or keyboard keys to these other view IDs? So I'm going to show you how to do that. X camera has a whole series of commands that you can map, you know, to these various, um, you know, to map to keyboard keys or joystick buttons. And selecting view IDs happens to be just one of those commands. So let's see how we can map. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to map, um, I'm going to map, say, my A key on my keyboard to my pilot view, which happens to be view ID number one. So we're just going to come up here to the X plane um, setup pages. We're going to go over here to keyboard. Okay. And then you're going to see all of the various operations. And SRS, which stands for Stick and Rudder Studios, if I open this up, you're going to see that there's X cameras in here. And then there's a whole bunch of commands in here, you know, that we can do. Momentarily select cameras with certain view IDs. We're going to come down here to the one where it says select view ID number one. And by the way, there are a lot of them, so you have to kind of scroll through here. Yeah. Selects the camera with view ID 10, selects the camera with view ID number one. So this is the one we want. 
and I'm just going to press the A key. And it is telling me that A is already bound to moves the camera with the mouse. I'm just going to undo that and hit done. Now if this is working right, if I come down here and I hit GPS and then I hit the A key, it should bring me back to the pilot view. Okay, so the beauty of uh, doing it with the SRS select view ID commands is you can get a lot more keys assigned to these various views beyond the 20 okay that, that X-Plane uh, gives you. Um, but right out of the box, X-Camera will support a quick look emulation or uh, just like um, using your default mappings of your numeric keypad keys. Just remember, everything's offset by one, okay? So numeric uh, keypad zero, which is mapped to quick look zero, that's gonna be equivalent to view ID number one. Okay, all right, let's see. I think uh, a couple of other things we wanna take a look at long as we're here. Let's take a look at this uh, retain mouse look position. By the way, I'm just going to do a save all. I like to do this regularly to make sure that I'm, you know, not losing my camera definitions. So there are a couple of things here. Retain mouse look position. With this on, as I rotate the camera, you're going to notice that it stays wherever I left it at last. Okay. I'm going to come up here and just restore the camera file. If I shut this off, the way it's going to look when I use a mouse look, I'm going to right click. As soon as I release the mouse button, it's going to snap back. So we have this on because generally um, this is what people are used to in X-Plane. This is the way it works in X-Plane by default. But if you prefer that it snaps back when you release the right mouse button click, all you have to do is shut, shut that off. Now another uh, common thing to use is uh, something like this enable temporary positioning, okay? What this does is it will allow you that if I were to come in here and I were to rotate this and I had it um, at that point, you'll notice, okay, that the way I can get this to come back is if I come back here and I just hit pilot view, it's going to snap me back to where it was last saved. And that's what enable temporary positioning does. If I were to shut this off and I were to rotate that like that, this camera is this camera's definition has now just been changed. If I were to come over here and try to reselect it, you'll notice it doesn't move it because it's not considered a temporary position change. I moved the camera with the right mouse look. It now says that camera is now over at this position. If I were to do a save all right now, this is where the pilot view camera would be left at. So a common thing is, I'm just going to restore this to get it back. If you leave that on, what it does is it remembers where the camera was last saved at. So if I move off of it and I pick anything else and then come back to it again, it's going to come back to its original position. Or if I move off of it, and I maybe now press my numeric keypad zero. Oh, I've got that mapped to something. Uh, there we go. I pushed the wrong key. It'll come back to it. Or if I move off of it and I select it in the mini control panel, it should bring it right back. So those are a couple of uh, features. By default, you probably want to leave them on, but it's good to understand how they, how they work and how they behave, because in some cases, you might want these shut off, depending upon what you're doing. Okay, let's now talk about uh, Track IR. For those of you that are using Track IR, or a Track IR equivalent like uh, Hat Track or, or um, some of the various Track IR emulators, you're going to want to know how to set this up, okay, with uh, to work with with X camera. So a couple of things we're first going to want to make sure we we remember. Let me just put this back like this and kind of get this out of the way. You can't have Track IR turned on both in X camera and in X plane at the same time. Uh, it's either one or the other. So the first thing you're going to want to make sure of is if you want to use it within um, X camera. Let me just see if I can remember where this is. Oh yeah, it's on the graphics page. You want to make sure that this is not checked down here. 
this enable track eye or track hat, make sure that's shut off in X-Plane. Um, if you have it on and you try to use it in um, X camera at the same time, they just kind of kind of fight with each other. So one or the other. So that's off. And we're in good shape there. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to install your track IR software and then start it up. So I've got a little icon down here for doing that. I'm going to start up track IR. And here's my track IR interface. All right, a couple things. When you first install this track IR software, typically the um, baseline installation is missing some of the game titles. Uh, so the first thing you want to check is come over here to titles, scroll down, and make sure that X camera is in here. If it is not, it's not going to work. See right here we have X camera. And I think to do a game title update, let me just see if I can remember where that is. Here it is. It's on this big icon here. You come over here and say check uh, check for game updates. And your game list is up to date. Um, typically when you start this thing it'll tell you if you need game updates. But the main thing is is if you just installed it, if you don't have X camera in the game list like you see right here, make sure you do a game update to get that going. Um, this interface also must be running. So once you get it up and running you just minimize it because it has to be going. Okay? Now, if you, typically the way you operate this is you start that track IR interface, then you start up X-Plane. If you did it backwards, in the situation where you started X-Plane and you did not have that track IR software running, then what you might have to do is come up to X-Camera and just disable it and re-enable it. Okay, we'll open the control panel again. I'm going to turn this on so you can see it a little bit better. And right now on this pilot view camera, we don't have track IR turned on. The track IR interface is working, but X camera is not accepting any input from track IR for this camera. If I come over here and I check this, now what I should be able to do is I look around, and what I'll do is uh, minimize this so you can see, as I move my head around, those um, offsets based upon how the head tracking is working get applied to the camera. Now, a couple of challenges, okay, with, um, with track IR. It's going to let me put my head outside the cockpit. See that? Or sometimes if I really lean too far back, I get my head back behind the, red, the, the um, headset. And you could maybe fuss around with the profiles on track IR to try to get it so that it doesn't do that. But X camera does have the ability to put limits, you know, on these uh, on these cameras. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to come up and we're going to do a reset track IR limits. And what that does is it basically sets up one meter limits, one meter to the left of the current camera, one meter to the right of the current camera, uh, one meter up, one meter down, one meter back, uh, one meter forward. Okay. And I can test these just by turning these on. You know, I can try to see, you know, where it's working. But um, you can see that the limits are not exactly, you know, where we want them to be. So how would you set these up? Well, the way I do it is, is you would lean over. And I'll set that to my max left. Maybe I'll lean over here. I'll set that to my max right. Okay, I don't definitely don't want to put my hat my head outside, so I'll hit that for my max up. Hard to scrunch down all the way, but make that down. Lean forward. It's probably about as far forward as I want to go. And then I'm gonna lean back. And that looks pretty good. And now that my limits are set, if I enable track our limits, you'll notice as I try to lean it's not going to let me put my head outside. If I try to lean back, 
it won't let me put my head back behind the headrest. Same with up. If I lean up, I hit the ceiling rather than poking my head outside the cockpit. So that's how you can set these up. In these um, fields, you can double click on them and, and move them around or basically put in the values you want. But generally, leaning and then using these little arrow buttons, okay, to set your max left, up, and right um, are the typical way that you would want to do that. And uh, you'll notice, okay, that in these other cameras, I don't have track iron on. So as I move my head around, no movement, no movement, right? Come back to the pilot view. Now I've got track IR working, okay? So I think um, that's probably a pretty good uh, idea of what's going on with the basic camera. How do you basically set up cameras? Um, how do you enable track IR? How do you do things like map um, keyboard keys or joystick buttons to the various view, not, view IDs? So this probably gives you a pretty good idea of the basic setup of how to install X camera, how to get the license key installed, and how to um, do a basic uh, camera setup. So this is the first tutorial. Uh, we'll have uh, a bunch of other ones here that are going to show you how to do uh, all of the other capabilities and, uh, and advanced features with an X camera. So thank you very much for uh, watching this and look forward to the next uh, set of tutorials.